Welcome back to Nexo Reacts. Let's see what the simulation has been up to today. Prison of light. A few are doctors and therapists who chose to be here, though most are inmates. Many of the supposed truths that have been sprinkled into the public are nothing more than false light. They have been given to the imbeciles and simpletons as a novelty, a bubble, a distraction. They are meant to weed out those who have not done the work to identify truth. Escape from this place is not a right, and it's not something that can be bestowed by any creed. It is a condition of rehabilitation, which many will not achieve. And though that may seem unfair, fairness is not a natural and any prize that can be shared by the masses is no prize at all. Those who have developed wisdom do not follow novelties. They seek out only those things that are true and actual. So when another social media personality tries to sell you on yet another fairy tale, observe it as the cautionary tale that it is. The ramblings of an inmate who will never break free. Pretty harsh words coming from that person there at the end, but, you know, this feeds back into the whole reincarnation theory, I think, where we have to figure out in this life what it is we need to do to come back in the next life as something better until we break the cycle and then find paradise. I think that's how it works. I don't know. Let me know in the comments if you believe in reincarnation. The prophet Ezekiel describes four encounters with spaceships. At first he saw clouds, fire, and he heard noise coming out from the sky out of the north and as the vehicle approached apparently it came rather quite in his direction he observed what he calls living creatures what Ezekiel calls the living creatures had straight legs and round feet or calves feet sometimes they're called and it was the description of these landing legs that made me take the book of Ezekiel serious from an engineering point of view. I have had the opportunity about 10 years ago to work with my group in my office in the, for the development of such a landing gear for an unmanned lunar landing stage. For that uh, hypothetical vehicle, we developed the landing gear and what we call the foot pan and what Ezekiel would call the round feet. One of the interesting examples of Ezekiel's ability to observe and to describe are the faces he sees on these living creatures. He sees four of them, an oxen, an uh, eagle, a man, and so on. They are located at the top of these helicopter units, and consequently they contribute <coughs> to his impression of having some living creatures uh, in front of him. What they actually are is quite interesting. Now, some helicopters, in particular in this case this one, uh, needs protection, just some hood around to protect them against dust or weather and so on. And such sheet metal structures will have cutouts, will have humps in order to accommodate levers or rods which are below them. And they do have, a distinct, they may have the distinct appearance of faces. We have uh, a number of such face-like structures, like for instance, uh, the Gemini capsule. Then we have very interesting uh, feature that looks like a monster. And every one of uh, the audience will remember to have seen faces in rocks, in old trees and tree stumps. I find it incredibly fascinating how there are so many overlaps between religious doctrines and also the ufo phenomena it feeds back into what i was saying in previous videos about how i think this is some kind of interdimensional entities which have been coexisting on our planet with us maybe even predate us and that when they do interfere with our physical world we can't understand what it is so we attribute it to a religious phenomena or something supernatural such as a ghost or whatever you know i'd be interested to see or hear what you all think about that 
and whether you think that maybe the stories in the Old Testament that they are derived from experiences with maybe what would be considered today as extraterrestrial life or maybe extra dimensional beings. Let me know what you think. If this doesn't signal the state of affairs in American housing, I don't know what will. But before I dive into this, let's talk about something different. Have you heard about the next big thing, money dysmorphia? Well, apparently Gen Zers and millennials have it, guys. Even if we're financially better off than we realize, we think we're poor. Money dysmorphia, it's trapping millennials and Gen Zers. What is this? Apparently, the new claim is, get this, that millennials and Gen Z keep hearing how tough we have it, guys. We're just hearing about it, how hard it is, how expensive it is to buy a home, how much it costs to raise children and secure childcare. None of it's actually real. You're just hearing about it, and that's making you fear it. But great news, because these headlines easily overshadowed the reality that the U.S. economy is actually pretty healthy. Bro, you're not poor. The fact that you don't have money, that's, <laughs> that's in your head. You just keep hearing headlines, okay? Like the fact that they're like, you just keep hearing that housing is expensive and that you can't afford a home and that's the reason why you can't it's because you're hearing about it is so stupid. Meanwhile, I'm getting emails from builders talking about their new innovative next-gen plans, okay? New innovation, never been done before. This email talks about how this next-gen bedroom set, kitchenette, living area, their own garage, separate entrance, this is all so that your adult children who cannot afford to live on their own can come back and have their own private space when they're living with mom and dad. Now, there's nothing new or innovative about this. This is just an in-law suite, right? Multi-generational housing. It's been done forever. But what's fascinating is that the builders are starting to market this as, hey, you should buy this house, an expansion for children who cannot afford to live on their own. Things are so inexpensive that kids who are getting degrees cannot afford to live on their own. So builders are like, hey, how can we market our product better to bring in these people? So which one is it? Can we not afford to live on our own because things are so crappy? Or is this just a mindset thing because the economy is actually pretty healthy, guys? Sure, is 90% of the world's wealth with Gen X, boomers, and the silent generation? Absolutely. But just because we don't have any of the money doesn't mean we're poor. It's in your head. I can completely agree with the outlook there where it's some kind of programming to make people believe that they are not actually as poor as they are is it to maybe stop people from maybe protesting or rioting make them believe that they're not as bad off as they actually are take it from me in the united kingdom at the moment houses cost an absolute fortune and anyone who's not earning more than maybe a combined income of 50 to 60 thousand pound cannot even consider getting a mortgage in maybe a rural area i think this is all going to collapse eventually the way everything is going the economy is not looking healthy at all anywhere in the world especially now the petro dollar is basically not going to be a thing i have no idea how the american economy is going to sustain itself especially with debt ceiling climbing and climate like it has been interesting times ahead personally think there's going to be a full-scale global economic collapse and it will usher in the digital currency a new digital currency for everyone that's just my idea you let me know what you think in the comments Hey, this is a weird one. A pharmaceutical company that's trialing a new groundbreaking age reversal pill had such good results that the local news wanted to run a story on them. But before they even could publish the video, the chairman and CEO died. You see, six months ago, this 12-year-old German shepherd was near death. He had terminal cancer, was operated on, and his prognosis wasn't looking good. The dog's caretaker knew that an age reversal trial was being conducted on dogs. And so she asked if Zeus could be a part of it due to his dire situation. The pill's aim is to lengthen telomere caps on human stem cells because as part of the aging process our telomeres shorten which increases the chance of age-related diseases and of course death if you can increase telomeres you can reproduce stem cells and keep repairing things so that you can get literally younger. They said that in their drugs, preclinical data from a previous in vitro human cell study, it showed that the medication lengthened telomeres by almost 200%. Zeus was granted access to the medication in April, and his caretaker said that she saw results almost immediately. He's doing marvelously. He goes out to our pool and he swims and he has fun and he, he plays with the tennis ball. A recent scan showed that the cancer in his body had completely disappeared, and the results were so remarkable 
remarkable that she asked for more to give another 12 year old dog that could hardly walk due to arthritis. And just last week, she said that he has started galloping and running again. But then, despite all of that, they hit us with this. And we are sad to report that since this interview was conducted, Dr. Christopher Chapman has recently passed away. On the company's website, they announced his passing saying, out of respect and privacy for Dr. Chapman's family, details of the 71 year old's passing will not be made available. And then added that to support the new chairman and CEO, three telomere directors have voluntarily resigned. Human trials for this drug are planned for mid-2025. Hmm, that's highly suspicious, isn't it? Seemingly have cracked the code and made an age reversal pill, and then the guy which came up with it disappears, and they won't explain why. I mean, he passed, passed away, but, you know, did he? Did he? All the other people which stepped up to the plate to take his position also stepped down. Makes me think that they're trying to keep that one away from the public and only move it around in exclusive circles. I don't know. That's just my conspiracy mind thinking out loud. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Some people in your life, the whole time, it could have been an angel disguised as a real person. Oh, like a guardian angel? No, they're literally an angel. Oh, yeah. So, you ever watch that show? I think it's called My Guardian Angel, the one on Family Channel way back in the day. So, pretty much the show, it was this guy in high school, and then he had a friend. He didn't know at the time. He was his angel, the one that's assigned to him to help him do better in life. Was it called Winging It? Yeah, that's what it's called. Yeah, oh, wait, that's a family channel. It's called Winging It. Yeah, it's called Winging That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what's crazy, that could happen right now. Like, somebody you know the whole time they're that person for you but you just think oh that's just gavin that's weird <laughs> that's just gavin <laughs> <laughs> there are certain people that you're supposed to meet on both sides of the coin people who are really good and help you figure out how to experience this existence in a positive way and then there are people who are bad for you which do the same thing but in a different way the negative experiences are meant to be like lessons which help you equip yourself with the necessary tools to be able to combat all of the different obstacles which come up in life and you need to have those negative experiences to be able to actually overcome them and then you get to enjoy the rewards of the positive company with a clearer head a more unburdened mind sometimes you've got to go through hardships with the positive person and you know they're your guardian angel let me know who is your guardian angel who do you suspect is a guardian angel in your life bilderberg meeting is an annual off the record forum the group's agenda is bolstering capitalism around the globe but what's wild all these people that were like weren't that important they would attend these bilderberg meetings and then they become presidents they become prime ministers so they're they get, invited they're invited but after they go and all of a sudden they're famous yeah so like obama went before he became president mm -hmm. clinton's went so many people. this could be the progression of a one world government they're making decisions that affect the whole entire world yeah and that takes to democracy out of the window. Oh, what's crazy is that he spelled out like this hypothetical situation, but it was literally what people for a long time have like predicted of like the end of the world, like with the Antichrist, the mark of the beast. Right. To talk about this implement of a chip, but what this chip does is it also affects your hormones and stuff yeah. to where you become more compliant to Which this is new system. You could really think of like the COVID vaccine yep. being yeah. like a test run of Seriously? how compliant people will be and how much they'll be pressured into getting and it. Like you think of like all these cities like New York and stuff, you couldn't travel, you couldn't go into a restaurant unless you had the vaccine card. Mm. Yeah. And it's a test run. That's one of the things I'm really worried about with this new certain, sounds like NSOCs going around with the World Health Organization treaty with so many countries being signed up to that and them having the final say on the way that countries handle events like this. If they were to roll out some kind of passport, which would then reduce the accessibility to various things such as finances produce you know even making online purchases it's basically like the mark of the beast which is spoken about in the bible so much do we have to accept some kind of intervention to be able to access things which we have the right to access as a human being i don't know maybe this all like feeds back into the transhumanism thing where if you're no longer human are you allowed to have human rights i have no idea whether this kind of subject matter is even allowed to be discussed anymore let's debunk the 1972 blue marble neil degrasse tyson says do you realize if you took earth with all of its mountains valleys and hills and and shrunk it down to the size of a cue ball it would be smoother than any cue ball ever machined. And look at this topography. This mountain alone would be about 100 miles tall. And that's just the beginning. So this is the 1972 blue marble, the only image that NASA has of this trip on their website. And here's why. This is another photo supposedly taken on the way to the moon. Now notice this big fat Terminator line here. This is the day that they set off for the moon. And notice in our solar system, 
the sun and the moon are pretty well aligned. If you know anything about orbital trajectory, this is how they do it. They'll leave Earth, go around, and then set their trajectory for the moon so wherever the sun is, they'll be heading that same direction. They're not going to change their trajectory until they get to the moon. So, if they leave Earth and they're heading toward the sun the entire three-day trip, then every time they look back at Earth, they're going to see the same light on that face of the Earth as the Earth would turn in the sunlight. So they would never experience a Terminator line in that three-day trip toward the sun, toward the source of light, looking back behind you. The only way you would see this is if when you got to the moon, you rode on the moon for like four days until it got around to the position where you would see a Terminator line on Earth. NASA took this off of their website. This is not on NASA.gov anymore. It's in the archives. You have to dig to find this one because they released all the photos and then were like, whoops, uh, whoops, we didn't think about orbital mechanics here. Oops, indeed. It's come out that they have edited their pictures. There's some other proof of a picture which was more recently uploaded, and one of the parts and the cloud patterns are all exactly the same. There's just a little bit of a change in the hue and saturation of the, the, the newer image. I'm trying to think the name of that man from the United Kingdom who hacked into NASA's computer systems and they were able to find all the images which had been doctored and ones which were waiting to be doctored. I mean, if he's telling the truth, this only goes on to support his claims. What do you think how much of what nasa says is a lie let me know in the comments so this woman right here named dorothy said that she lived 3300 years ago and served at the court of pharaoh not only did she just claim it she also had knowledge of things that she should have not even known and that most people even in the field of egyptology even knew we're about to get into reincarnation and the demonic plot set forth to make you believe that we reincarnate because Dorothy and these other people really believe those demonic voices, that deja vu, and the demonic presentation of a past life that they thought they had. Shout out to Biggie Verma for laying the story out so I can show you guys how demons impersonate past lives. The Bible says it's appointed for man to live once, then to face judgment. Now we do see something weird with Elijah as John the Baptist was born of Zechariah and Elizabeth with the spirit of Elijah, the Bible says? I'm not gonna pretend to understand that, but I do know for most of us humans, we live once, then we die once, and we are appointed to judgment. So you'll find with these reincarnation stories of these people thinking they had past lives, that it starts very, very young. We don't know the exact gateway that these demons get in, but we know that they're getting in because they're showing them things of the past life. It's very similar to, say, astral projection. When you're in that astral plane and you can see the past and you can see the future, sometimes they'll give you some truths, but how much lies mixed in with that truth? At age five, Dorothy was quickly able to read and write, having everything to do with ancient Egypt. At 10 years old, Dorothy met with a famous archaeologist and he was going to teach her these hidden ancient languages and somehow she already knew what it was. Demons are very deceptive. Imagine you did not know Jesus Christ but you had all these memories of past time. You would believe it was your past life. Dorothy then had a son named him Seti because she worked in the court of the Pharaoh Seti. Notice this part here. She is visited by a spirit called Hora, who was enlightening her of her past life. The Bible says to test the spirit. Not all spirits are from God. And this one was certainly not. So from that alone, we see that she had had visitations from literal spirit beings, demons or fallen angels, telling her that, hey, this is you. By the way, the archaeologists, the Egyptology people, they all believed her once she started recounting stories of her past or the past that she was shown. So she actually got verified from the chief of antiquities of ancient Egypt and he gave her a bunch of questions and she passed. My friends, this is divination. Anyone partaking and talking to spirits to recount their old lives of this reincarnation are all participating, some unknowingly, in divination. So then she was set in a dark room with these ancient paintings and she was asked to identify them without being able to see them. And she did just that. 
I think right here is the perfect place to tell you that those who do real black magic, spelled with the K, those people, they're actually performing in divination as well. There are some sorcerers and magicians, we even saw them in ancient Egypt in the Exodus, copying the same miracles that Moses was doing. Anyways, when you see the magicians and they do real magic, make things really disappear. I'm not talking about the fake stuff and the card tricks. I'm talking about when they do real magic right in front of you, there's no way it's fake right in person that they have help from demons. There's actually a very ancient covenant that magicians would get into. They sign a contract with a demon or a fallen angel and they say, okay, in this physical life, you demon will be my slave, but when I die, I will be your slave. Don't believe me? Google it. Back to Dory, she was actually able to bring up discoveries that had not even been discovered yet. And Dorothy's far from the only person who had these past lives and was able to prove them and gain fame and it pushes people away from Christianity because then they believe in reincarnation. This great new age, you're going to be reincarnated over and over again until you reach enlightenment. You need to be very careful with every doctrine you hear, all philosophy you hear, all theology you hear, and back it up with the Bible. Let God be true and every man be a liar. You cannot even fathom the things and the delusions that these demons and fallen angels and Lucifer himself can bring about. Very interesting subject matter. I mean, I don't know what you believe. If you are a person of faith or if you are atheist, can't deny it's all very interesting stuff. Now, I've read a book called The Lesser Keys of Solomon. It was purely out of the curiosity of the symbology. And I came to the conclusion that what King Solomon was talking about with all these different demons demons it's all metaphorical but it does speak about how to harness the will and energy of these entities and I, I still believe it's metaphorical even though the terminology sounds very explicit and instructional I encourage any of you which are interested in the subject matter to read that book because it kind of feeds back into what he was saying about magicians now I don't understand why if you could harness the power of a entity which works in the supernatural plane why would you would use it for magic tricks with all different things that you would be able to do with that kind of power why would you opt for that but i'm sure that if it is such a thing that people are using it for way more wilder sinister things anyway let me know what you think in the uh, comment section below have you ever tried tampering around with this stuff interested to hear what you have to say that just about does it for today's video i hope that you've enjoyed these clips if you did enjoy it, please like and subscribe. I release a video like this every single day about 8pm UK time. And if you want to continue on this conversation about any of the content which we cover in these videos, the subject matter, you can keep the conversation going in our Discord community, the link for which can be found in the description of this video. Keep curious and I'll see you tomorrow.